Hello guys, welcome back to EU4 uh, and welcome to this very first episode of a tutorial series I'm going to make about Europa Universalis 4. This series is meant for new players of the game uh, Europa Universalis 4 <laughs> and those series can be very daunting for well new players. Um, there's a lot of systems and mechanics you have to take note of and, um, and it is a real-time grand strategy game. Um, so that can also be a bit daunting or a bit, uh, well, difficult for many players to deal with. Uh, but this very first, wait, never, yeah, first episode will be the basics, and then I will del delve into uh, mechanics or areas such as mid the military warfare uh, as one thing, uh, including the navy. Um, it, the economic aspect of it and diplomacy. I'm not sure what order I want to do that in, but anyways, we just pressed single player, and the first screen you get when you get into the game is this screen. You can see out here I'm playing with all of the different um, expansions and DLCs. I there's a few ones I don't have, which is mainly the cosmetic ones where they change um, the units for specific nations and such. Now out here in the left corner you can see the historical start. Most pit players, if not all, start at this date, the first date you can start as in 1444 AD. It's also the start date which is uh, the most, well, detailed uh, compared to the others here, but you can scroll down and say you want to start in the American War of Independence, you can click here, and the game will load, boop, and uh, then the world is, well, as it was in 1776. You can hold down the middle mouse button, as I'm doing now, and move around, or move the screen around. I tend to do that when, well, moving around. You can use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out, also in-game. Um, but yeah, I'm going to... This is not will really be a normal let's play as we take a country and lead to greatness, it will just be an introduction of the, uh, well, of the game. So we'll go back to the start date as well, because I think most people, <laughs> if not all, start there. So that will where they will get their experience from. You can see how the world is, and also you can, if you didn't know, you can choose any country you want to play as. Uh, if you have, I think, yeah, you don't need every DLC for that though. I think you can always play as everyone. Say you want to play the Ottomans, I click, I left click on them. Um, I want to play Chimera, I left click on them, and so on and so forth. For this demonstration, I'm going to play as France. Um, not, I could also change play as Castile or Portugal, it doesn't really matter, because we won't really go into war or anything right now. Not in a sense where we'll finish the war in a normal sense. We're going to play as France, and uh, we're going to left click on France, and you can see out here in the right, when you click on a nation, of course their icon or flag, banner, what religion they have, a Catholic, they are Technology Group Western, I will explain that a bit later. And we are a Kingdom, which is a rank you can get in the game. There are th three ranks for every nation, and they sometimes call something different, but they are a Duchy, Kingdom and Empire. Um, and France starts as a Kingdom, the middle rank. Uh, and that gives different bonuses. Uh, yeah, We have, uh, well, we are an independent nation. We have our king here, King Charles the Seventh of the Divola, Divalu <laughs> family. He has some uh, stats here, and they're called monarch stats. I will talk about them in game. Uh, and they have technology of the three, 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 which is the basic one. Now every country has ideas. Some are unique. Some are more uh, well tied to where they are in the world. Say, if clicked on Ferrara here. I think they have Italian ideas. And there are other nations that also share those ideas. I think Siena also has Italian ideas. But France got French ideas and they are these various things. I will go into that later. Uh, they start the game with 27 provinces. You can see if you zoom in. Um, France here, the blue, is divided into small areas which is called provinces. And they have 27. They have 347 uh, development. This is a number you want to have as high as possible as, at all times because every province has a certain amount of development and more development, the stronger the province is. And they have fort level of 9. This is not that important, but it just says yeah, they have like 9 fort level. It's a bit odd. 
uh, don't mind that, that too much. They're allied with Provence at the start of the game, you can see here, allied, and they're guaranteeing the independence of Scotland. Provence is down here, <laughs> over here, and over here. Provence also has Lorraine as a subject. They rule Lorraine, just not directly. And they're also guaranteeing, well, France is guaranteeing Scotland up here. So, we we'll click on France. You can also see, before, before we go in, uh, these shields down here. Uh, these three over here, they are glowing green, which means they are recommended for new players. I would also say France is somewhat recommended for new player. I think the best nation for a new player would probably be Portugal, because they are somewhat isolated, and if you just made friends with Castile, uh, maybe even gave away this little enclave they have down here away to Morocco, you would be sort of safe from wars for a long time. Anyways, we have France selected and we will play, oh, click play. But, yeah, I guess before we do it, we have also other options here. You can do random new world, you can make your own nation, and do a random nation as well. You can just click here and we'll choose a random nation for you. Uh, we're not going to delve into that. I might uh, do a specific uh, small episode in the tutorial re regarding New World and Random Nation. And there are also options over here. You can find something. If you want to find France, you'll just click in France. You can also s turn off exact matches. And it will zoom all to France, to the capital. As you can see here, Paris. We have options. Uh, we can set the difficulty down. I would not recommend... well, I guess, I don't know. If uh, As a new player, maybe you could do this. Turn it down to easy, or very easy. I would recommend starting on normal, uh, and then trying there first, and then if you find the game too hard, try and go down to easy or very easy. And, most, and custom setup. Uh, this is mostly for... what do you call it? Uh, random nations. Uh, no, sorry custom nations and so on, uh, and other things. Not that important right now, but uh, yeah, there's an option in, in here. It's fine. So, let's do play, and you can turn Iron Man mode. This is where you can't, so to say, save scum. Uh, save an earlier save, in case you did a, did a mistake. I would recommend for new players to just take normal mode, but if you, can, if you can, move over to Iron Man mode as fast as possible, because it does give a bit more excitement to the game, where you can't, well, go back in time and fix a mistake. But we're going for this demonstration, just take normal mode. And trick, click play. Let's see if I can keep this somewhat short. <laughs> I feel like I already talked a lot. <laughs> um, right, when you start a game, you get this um, screen popping up, telling you about the situation. You can read that uh, if you want to and to scroll down if there's something to scroll down on. This is just showing down here my different DLCs and you can click the religion. It tells you about, in this case, uh, Catholicism. You can click on the government, what kind of government you got, and the environment where you are. Not uh, not like uh, how the forests are doing in France. Just where you are on the uh, on the planet, really. We'll just close this. Right, so when you get into a game, this is how the game starts. You have uh, up here the top left, the more important bits of your empire, uh, various resources and such, icons, alerts. Over here you have the, something called the outliner, which is an easy way to find things. Uh, you can also uh, put more stuff on. And uh, you can close it up here on this little icon. Look, look, I like to have this out, uh, outliner on. You can see I have del disabled a few alerts. Alerts, it's up here. Uh, I disabled something called the Defender of the Faith, disputed succession. Uh, we have claims that might expire. I will talk about that a bit later. Um, but this is my outliner, this is the resource manager. Now, first you want to tr sort of look and up here what type of alerts you've got. Uh, we have this called Too Few Rivals. Every country, most countries, uh, are required to have either one or maybe three uh, three rivals. If you're too small or, and weak, or too big and strong, you might be in a position where you have no like rivals. It means nations who are somewhat your strength. Somewhat. You can see here, if you click uh, on this icon, this screen pops up. This is a very important screen. 
uh, because it, you fix or you do a lot of stuff with your country in the screen. We'll go through these tabs up here and I think uh, for this episode uh, basically telling telling you what what they do. Yeah, so before we go into here uh, well we have this uh, rival system I guess we can just put rivals now. Having rivals means uh, that you have an easier time being antagonizing uh, uh, against those enemies. You can see here if we hover a mouse over an empty rival slot it says uh, no a rival selected. Click here and then click on a country in the list to set it as your rival. And then it says against a rival we have the following benefits. More likely to get alliances with the enemy. So it means if other people have say Denmark as a rival uh, they're more likely to ally me because we have the same rival. So it's good to take rivals you know you'll be at war with and then find friends who hate them as well. Uh, we have we are, we will get 25% more prestige from defeating them in battles. Prestige is something I will talk about later, but prestige is good. You always want prestige. We have no trade efficiency penalty when embargoing. If you you can embargo people in trade, but if you do it with non-rivals, you will get a penalty to it. But against rivals, that's fine and dandy. 25% spy net construction against them means when you can send over a spy or diplomat which will then be turned into a spy and spying or getting a spy network up and running uh, has various things that work in your favor when going to war with them and other things. And then we have a 33% cost down for demanding provinces from them in the peace deal. When you uh, go to war and you win over someone you can grab provinces from them and then if you do it against a rival that will be 33% cheaper in demanding them. So let's just rival those who rivaled us. So Denmark, we can also click. We will get to Denmark screen, the Danish screen. <laughs> then we can click the screen here and it will, or this little shield, it will bring us over to Denmark, which is where I actually live. I live right here. Duk, duk, duk. Um, but yeah, Denmark, they don't like us. Oh, Denmark. A way to get back to this our own screen is to, uh, excuse me, uh, just click here again. Um, right, so we'll click left click and you get a list of people you can arrival and we're just gonna pick Denmark here. You can also see this, how they're doing compared to us, uh, if they like, or like us or not. Uh, army size, it means compared to Denmark we have 57% uh, or a 50% larger army than them, but they have a larger navy than us. So anyways, we're going to rival them, left click and just asking us if we're sure, yes. We'll do that with England as well. And Burgundy. Right. So now we have that alert taken care of. You can see another alert, free advisor slot. It means you can have advisors in your government which aids you or helps you getting more monarch power. Monarch points rather. Uh, I guess we can talk about this first screen here then because it's tied into the advisor slot. When you click your shield, you can also click it away. As I said before, this tab or menu comes up with a bunch of tabs up here at the top. These tabs are very important, it uh, makes you run your country. So, the first tab is called Court. It is, It shows who rules your country and if you have any advisors helping you and how much monarch power you, you're getting. Uh, you can see here we have a king, he has a monarch ad administrative skill of 4, diplomatic skill of 2 and military skill of 4. He's Charles the Seventh, and he has two traits so far. He's getting he's getting a third trait in three years. You can only have three traits in any ruler. So the first trait he got was inspiring leader, which gives our army five percent morale. That is pretty damn good. We have possible advisors plus one. Advisors uh, that's uh, down here. We'll show in a moment. And in three years he'll get another one if you have ruled for twenty five years. You can see his age over here. We can abdicate him make Charles VII abdicate and let Louis take the throne. This will be a hit of minus 20 uh, legitimacy and minus 50 prestige from this action after the heir's claim has been considered. This I only recommend if your ruler is really bad and your heir is really good. And I mean really really bad and really really good. Um, or in your such uh, in a position where you don't care about losing 20 legitimacy and 50 prestige. In general you do care. It's not often I do it. Uh, to say, the, to say it. 
Uh, and then we have below our king or ruler, we have our heir, the, the, the Dauphin, the prince, Louis de Valois. He has a administrative skill of four, which is the same as our king. He has one more in diplomatic skill, but two less in military skill. So he's technically one monarch power worse than our current ruler, uh, our heir. He has an age of 21, and his claim is strong. Um, claim and le le legitimacy is this uh, modifier up here. I will talk about that later when we go through all this stuff up here after these tabs. And down here we have our consort or queen. Uh, if you have a queen ruling, this will be the prince consort, I think, or just yeah, yeah, I think so, something like that. It's Marie Dianjou. Her stats doesn't really matter that much, and neither does this. But you will get good events if you have a good consort with good stats and good traits then there's a chance of something called random events. This game is riddled with events that will just pop up. Sometimes they can be good, sometimes they can be bad, and you have no say in when they pop up or not. Except with a few e e e uh, exceptions, uh, but that's not really important right now. Alright, so, confused yet? I hope not. <laughs> it will only get worse. Um, but, down here you can add to the court by bringing in advices from each, you can see here, Administrative, Diplomatic and Military Skill. Now if I click here, Recruit Advisor, you get a list of advisors. You can click back again and nothing will happen. We have this trait up here, Well Advised, so possible advisors. Normally you only have three advisors to choose from, but because we're plus one here, we'll get four. And you can see out here on the right side, they get plus two, plus two, plus one, plus one. Now these advisors cost money. You can see if you click uh, or look at the bottom one down here. You can see he is a Catholic, or he is Catholic. He is of advisor culture Francian, he is French. We'll look into culture later. Um, his ability right now is giving us a plus yearly pre prestige plus one. So it, our prestige level will tick up slightly, at a up to a certain level at least, um, with this uh, advisor. His upfront cost is 16 ducats and one ducat uh, this is money, by the way. <laughs> uh, monthly. He's age 30, so he, he will live for a long time. Hopefully. Maybe, I don't know, 20 years maybe. Something like that. The older these uh, guys get, uh, the higher chance they got for or in, in dying of old age, basically. You can also, if you have enough money, just uh, fire an advisor, then wait uh, one month and a new advisor will pop out pop up if you don't like, say, I want a level 1 advisor, but I don't want this yearly prestige and I don't want production efficiency, so I'll just use some money and cycle through them over time and get someone I want. But if if I want to hire this guy, Bartholomew de Castien, I will left click here. Do you wish to recruit him? 16 uh, ducats and additional 1 ducat a month. And if you look up here to the top left corner, right to the top right of this uh, shield, we have a treasury of 276 and a half ducat. And it also says the previous monthly balance was 4.77 ducats per month. You get a tick, when I say a tick, I mean one month. Every month is a tick and th stuff can happen in these ticks, especially with money. Um, so we have plenty of, uh, a big treasury for these 16 ducats, so we'll hire one here. Now, I should may maybe have shown that before, but out here on the right you can see uh, administrative power, diplomatic power, and military power. We get a bonus of seven, no, uh, a total of seven uh, admin power every tick, so every month. We get a and seven here as well, and six down in military. So before we had six, now we have seven. Uh, we can sh look at here, or oh, see it here. We have seven now, without any advisor. You can also focus on one of these if you want to. Right now we're focusing on diplomatic power, which gives us plus two to diplomatic. But it also gives a minus one here and minus one here. So you can get plus two to one of these areas if you want to, but it will give a minus to one, uh, um, both of the others. So you don't really gain anything, you can just focus on, say, I really want to focus on military because there's a really good technology we want as fast as possible. We will, we will actually want to do that. I recommend always focusing on here because the first technology you get if you start in the western world is a big bonus to morale. So we'll just click here, left click here, oh, and it says 4, no sorry, 7, 4, 9. So 
Anyways, we need one more advisor. Click here again. Trade efficiency. That sounds fine. You don't want to take plus two. I guess maybe you could at France, could as France, but they they cost quite a lot. For one more point, it goes up from one docket a month to four docket uh, dockets a month. So as you can see here, before our income was now down to 3.77. So getting uh, uh, advisors more than level one at the start is not something I suggest unless you're starting as a very, very big country, such as maybe the Ottomans or maybe Ming. We'll get this trade efficiency guy, trader, and yes, and we'll also get one advisor down here in military, a morale guy. Morale of armies plus 10%. You can look at these on your own uh, leisure when playing the game. You can just have the game paused, nothing will happen. Right, so this is our court. We have everything running. Good amount of monarch power, which I will show why you need this uh, in this tab over here. But first, government. Uh, we have a government of a kingdom. We have three ranks, a duchy, kingdom and empire right now, and they're tied into how big you are. Right now, we are a kingdom. If we want to become an empire, we need something called development, and we need a thousand of it. Right now, we have 347, as I said before we start. We started this little tutorial. Oh, damn. Well, we, pl we played for 20 minutes or something. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Um, uh, you generally will also want, or, or it's, it's not that important, the, the rank. It's sort of important, it gives the various bonuses, but it's not a big deal. Um, but you do want to get as high a rank as possible. Right now, we're a kingdom, it gives us plus one diplomat. Monthly autonomy change goes down. It's, uh, that's something we will delve into later, and maybe not this episode. A number of states and a national cooldown, focus cooldown minus five years. Uh, states, it's your provinces are divided into, uh, well, states, uh, and they are sort of connected. I will tell a bit why, maybe, uh, probably in the economic uh, episode, instead here. The national focus cooldown is actually this cooldown here, because we clicked here, and then it lasts for 20 years. Normally, it was 25 years if we were not a kingdom. So after t after 20 years, 20 years, we can either click this away, so uh, no one got a bonus, or we can click it over on something else. Back to government. You can also see there's shortcut one, two, three. I normally just click, but if you like to use the keyboard, that's your prerogative. Anyways, we have a. Uh, this is not that important to start with. Uh, to be honest, we can click here. This is the sort of important one with the whole government. You can click here uh, and you can enact reforms. Donk. This goes up if you have uh, low autonomy um, in your country, then it goes up faster and faster. You can see there is various reforms you can do with your country. When this ticks up, it goes down to zero again, and then it, when it ticks up again, you can take the next reform. Right now, we start with power structure, tier one. You can choose between feudal nobility, which gives income from vassals at the very bottom, plus 25%, but something called nobility influence will be plus five. Or you can choose what we have, autocracy, which gives unjustified demands minus 10%. This is uh, in war when you demand provinces, you don't really have a cause of spell eye for, or a re reason to, to, uh, to take a province in a war. But we just start with autocracy. If you change this uh, after you've taken something, you can click here, and you will gain 10 corruption. 10 corruption is bad. Corruption is something called a uh, eh, sort of... Um, a resource, I guess, a bad resource to get up here. It it does a bunch of bad things for your country. So you don't want corruption in general. We'll just click cancel here. We can click back here to government. Or we can just click back down here. And back to the screen. You can see here, down here, we have accepted cultures and non-accepted cultures. Uh, the whole world is divided into various cultures. Down here, if you haven't noticed, we have a small map and uh, various... Um, map modifiers. You can click here and you can look at the map in various ways. Uh, I will go through this a bit. Not right now, but after these tabs. But there's something called cultures. Normally you can also find every map mode in here. These four icons over here and you can scroll and click. You can also move them out here uh, in this screen here. But if you clicked on culture, you can see we have uh, the yellow one here. It's the French culture group. And uh, you can see a Francian French culture group, and it says our primary culture is Francian. Francian is in the French group, 
the yellow here is the group but we have Francian. If we click left click on a province here it will show the different culture groups within the French culture. You can click here and you can see we are the Francian culture so that's our main culture and now our little tab went away but that's okay. You have Gascon, Occitan, Burgundian, Walloon, Norman and Breton. We can click up here again pop, and we'll go back to the screen where it, it went away. We have, you can see, ex accepted Francian because it's our main culture group and we have also accepted Occitan and Gascon. Um, you can see down here at the bottom promoted cultures two out of two. We cannot promote more cultures but we have nothing else below us or in our country. If say we had um, something of some one of uh, these provinces over here we would have a Breton being over here as non-accepted. Accepting cultures will make them more happy having you ruling them uh, so you want to look how big the cultures are and what they bring to the table in terms of uh, the development they bring in. You can see here 54% of our development is of Francian culture, 29 of Occitan and 15% of Gascon. So Gascon culture is not that big in our empire or kingdom right now, not empire. If we became an empire, all of uh, the culture groups in the French culture group would be automatically accepted. So we wouldn't have to, well, uh, promote the culture. You can uh, promote and like demote a culture. If you say I don't want to have Gascon here as an accepted culture anymore, I can click here. It will say removing Gascon as a promoted culture will cost 10 diplomatic power. Unrest in all Gascon provinces will rise by plus 5. So we can remove them from our accepted, but they will be a bit mad for some years, 5 years. And you can see country modi country modifiers over here. If you get some kind of event that gives us uh, a modifier, it will pop up pop up over here. Uh, anyways, <laughs> talk for a half an hour. We went to through two tabs. Ugh, mm, I thought these these episodes will be short. I guess not. Um, yeah, I think we'll probably just go through here uh, these tabs right now. Maybe I will hurry up a bit more. But it's a very complicated game. Anyways, this is our diplomacy screen. Right now we have our own country looking at. You can left click on a country here and it will pop up here in diplomacy screen. Click on Aragon, it pops up. You can click on your own and you can see you can't really do much with your own country. You can release the vassals down here though. We don't want to do that. You simply say, I don't want to rule Orléans and Touraine. I click here and send them on their merry way. They will pop out here as a vassal of mine though. Anyways, back here to diplomacy. And this basically shows our king, who's our, who's our heir, our claim. And uh, over here you can see diplomatic relations. We can have two out of four right now. This value can go up or down uh, with the various ideas and events. If you go above this limit you will pay a penalty of some dip diplomatic monarch power. One for every uh, you call it the threshold you're over. If you if I had five diplomatic diplomatic relations here, I will pay one diplomatic power up here per month, so that would be bad. Reputation is how much people uh, tend to favor you, and relations is how much they like you. These two are somewhat tied together. Um, it's good to have a lot of these in general, uh, especially relations. But re reputation is also quite handy, uh, especially if if you want to integrate. Uh, subjects who you rule, not but you rule them indirectly. Say, yeah, uh, if I had Provence as a vassal, I could annex them later on, or what you call them, yeah, take their land through peaceful means by annexing them diplomatically, and then you want a lot of diplomatic reputation. Right now, I have two and four percent bonus to relations with other people. We can see our rivals who we added to Provence. We have here reconquest Corsus Belli. Cosuspella is a reason for war, so uh, we will go through that when we have the war uh, segment <laughs> in another episode. But you can see your own uh, Cosuspella here on the screen, and you can see who you're going to see. Every, basically everything dip diplomatic with your own country. Say, if I want to click on England, one of our rivals, we can see here, they have a ruler, Henry the Sixth Lancaster, he is a total retard, 000, zero, zero, so that's good for us. You can see... Uh, people who rivaled England is Scotland, Aragon, Castile and us, France. England rivaled France, Aragon and Castile. So you can see Castile is a natural ally of us because we didn't rival Castile. 
but uh, they rivaled Fra uh, England and we also allied England. We will look at that in the diplomatic uh, um, episode. We can see England is allied with Portugal and they have a reconquest Cosus Belli on France, so they have a reason to go to war with us. Uh, basically, you always need a reason to go to war in this game. You can't go to war without any reason, but that is um, uh, that that is usually or that has a lot of uh, ramifications of bad things with your country if you do it. I generally don't recommend it. Uh, you can also see here the different tabs you can do with people. You have clicked. Say I've clicked England. I can't do anything right now, really. Normally, you need a month to tick by to do much. Uh, declare war. You cannot. You can never start the game unless uh, before a month have passed uh, regarding declaring war. Yeah, you have to wait one month before you can go to war. But this we will go through in the diplomatic section of uh, this little tutorial, which is another episode. Anyways, this is the diplomatic screen. You can also see up here the tech, three three three, stability, culture, policies if they have any. Our English spy network is zero, so if we have a spy in here, this will tick up and be higher. We can see it how, how big it is. Revanchism, not that important, but if England lost a bunch of land, they would get some revanchism, which is a bunch of uh, short-term bonuses to their country, because they're mad about losing uh, a province. Uh, their prestige here, uh, their ideas, you can see the English traditions. Uh, they start with this, they get more later on. And their score. The score is not that important this game in my opinion, but it is here. Maybe for multiplayer it is important. And corruption. So it's a small... Well, you can just click on a country and see how they're doing with a quick glance. You can also see their rank up here. Uh, England also is a kingdom. And uh, if you click on Brittany down here, you can see they are a duchy. You see the crown grows smaller here. And their religion of course, and what they are. A dictatorship. Mm. Um, yeah, I think we will go through this in a dip in a, another episode. Economy. We will also go much more detail with uh, economy later, or in another episode, the eco economic episode. <laughs> but you can see over here, this is our income through the various means, and this is our expenses. And then you can see down here what our balance is each month. Normally you want a month to tick by. I'll just add the speed. You can use the plus and minus on your keyboard to up and uh, slow down the speed or make it faster. I usually play on speed 4, but I recommend maybe new players playing on speed 2 or 3. You can also click up here with the mouse. Speed. You can also see the, the date over here, right. <laughs> um, as the game starts in the 11th, 11th of November 9, 1444. I will actually not just let the game roll for a month. Or at least a tick. See if this updates. Yeah. We'll pause again. New rivalry. Sometimes you get pop-ups for what people do to you. It just said, Austria has announced us as their new rival. Boo, Austria. Back to England. And you can see we got a new alert up here. When, pe when other nations want to do something diplomatic with you, you get an alert up here. Uh, Provence asked us for a royal marriage, so we can left-click here. We can also right-click to, to decline it. Or just let it like pass, then we'll go away on its own. We can left click Provence, which is our ally, asked, do we want to have a royal marriage? And it will give us a few bonuses with them and a higher chance of getting a new heir. We'll take say yes. We'll lose a bit of uh, legitimacy when doing so, but that's fine. Um, anyways, this was the, the diplomatic, back to the econo economic. But right now we are losing more than we're earning, that's bad. In general you want this to go, well, to be in the greens. You can move these various sliders. I will talk about that in the economic episode a bit more. But you can see where you're losing a lot of money. Right now we're losing a lot of money on our forts. Uh, our advisors, as we just hired them, costing us three ducats a month. State maintenance. Uh, as I said earlier, provinces are divided into states. Oh, uh, uh, provinces. A state is a collection of provinces, more like. Um, Army maintenance, our army is costing us a lot. You can ho hover the mouse over where to see where exactly our uh, expenses are coming from. Our army right now is just really expensive. You can move this down and see we can earn more money. Usually in peacetime, I tend to have my army on like zero maintenance or just a tad here and then move them into the center of my country so they can't 
like get killed instantly if someone declares war on, war on me because low army ma uh, low maintenance army they have very low morale so they're easy to beat uh, but if you are in need of cash you generally want to, to move this down in peace in peacetime rooting out corruption usually I go turn this up to the max uh, because I don't want corruption in my country it does a lot of bad things so right now we're earning something again here uh, over here you can see if the, if I had any inflation, it will show here uh, as a graph. This is also inflation. Inflation makes things be more expensive, so you generally don't want inflation. You can see something called the war exhaustion, which is um, if your country is having a hard time in a war, you gain gain war exhaustion, and war exhaustion is bad for your country, with the various uh, debuffs in uh, in general. And you can see our development as I talked before, 347. Here you can take a loan. You can take a bunch of loans, uh, you have to pay them back. You can also get various ideas that makes the rent, or the interest, not rent, pay rent, uh, the interest lower. Uh, right now we have an interest per annum for 4%, so we take a loan 176 ducats. It will, well, cost us more to pay it back, 4% of 164, I don't know what that is, 190 or something. Uh, it will also increase inflation by 0 0.10, so it's not a lot, I guess we could take a loan just to see it click here right we have to pay 35.16 ducats back extra uh, over this loan so a bit over 210 ducats um, dunk. and we're taking a loan and you get a new alert up here you have loans and you can see here we have to pay it back on the 5th of December 1947 so five years uh, if you don't have the money at the time, uh, the loan will be extended for some inflation. You can only extend the loans a certain amount of time. I'm not really sure how many times you can extend it, but there is a limit, but it's rather high. If you're in uh, problems in a war, I do recommend uh, taking a bunch of loan. I do that all the time. Uh, if I don't have the cash for it, if I'm being attacked. Um, it does help you, but it is something you have to pay back, and it can ruin your nation if you take too many loans you can't take back. Now we have something, a button here called Repay Loan. If you want to pay it back earlier, you can just click here if you have the money. This loan, yes, let's just repay it. And this will include the interest, so you can't like get rid of the interest by paying the loan back earlier. Donk. You can uh, repay multiple loans if you have a lot of money and many loans. Or you can debase currency, you gain some money for free, quotation mark, for some corruption. If the corruption was up here. I guess I can take some just to show you. Uh, if we click here, we get 176 uh, ducats, donk. but then because we're, we're trying to uh, fight corruption, we are paying a lot. We could also just lower this to zero, Not then we're not fighting corruption. I generally don't do this, I don't like corruption, but some people, they don't mind it that much. Corruption up here. It, uh, right now it gives us a bit of national risk down, <laughs> but our spy de de detection is going down, our spy network construction is going down, everything is 2% more expensive, and by that I mean uh, everything you use your monarch power on, technology and ideas. And autonomy goes up by 1% in all of our provinces, which is also bad, so I don't like it, so we're just gonna try and fight it here, doesn't really matter that much. You can also over here because we gain a bit of inflation. These three buttons here raise war taxes. If you're at war, it costs some military power, which is these powers up here. We can use some admin power, administrative power to lower inflation by two. I don't want to do it when we only have minus or oh, 1.10. Okay, this episode is turning out to be a lot longer than I anticipated. <laughs> um, yeah, and we have this declared bankruptcy. If you have too many loans, you can't pay back. But Enough about that. We'll delve into that a bit more later on. This is trade. This is um, something I also want to delve into another episode because I don't want to have this be too long. Uh, basically, trade is a money maker in various situations. Right now, we can see here we're making 3.51 ducats a month in trade. We have various um, modifiers to a trade over here. We can promote something called mercantilism, which makes our trade better, but it costs. Uh, diplomatic power of 100, normally 102 now because we have corruption. And this down here we'll delve into in a trading episode. I think trade will probably be its own episode. But basically trade, as you can see here with economy, 
3.51, so trade can later on become uh, the big money maker in general, especially if you have colonies and t you're pulling trade home to your main trading area or trade node as it's called. Technology is a big deal, uh, the higher technology the better. Right now we have three different technology groups, admin technology, diplomatic technology and military technology. We all start at three right now. Uh, we have something called institutions, um, which basically means, how to explain this, everyone, mostly, most of the world start with an institution called feudalism. Feudalism started in 1066 and f having feudalism gives uh, us an uh, extra leader we can have in our country of France. Right now we have feudalism so we don't have to worry about that. You can see here when it popped. Having this tech means that we have no penalty to our technology. The next institution that will pop, they will pop in this direction here from left going right, is Renaissance. Renaissance will pop in 1450. That is, that is in roughly five years or thereabouts. It can be delayed by a few years, but generally they tend to pop in this its day and age where it says over here 1500, 1550 and so on. Now, it always pops, Renaissance always pops in Italy somewhere. You can hover, hover the mouse over here and see uh, where they tend to pop these institutions. Sometimes you can get institutions pop in your country if you're lucky and have a certain amount of um, ideas or uh, modifiers, then you might say if I took an idea group called colonialism, I might be able to get this institution to pop in France somewhere. But if you if an institution pops and you don't get that institution fast enough, then every year this institution is on the board or in the world, you will get a plus one cost to your technology up to plus 50 for each institution you don't have. You can get something called embrace institution if the institution has spread to your country. If you, if you click back here on feudalism, you can see feudalism is still spreading down here and over here of the striped lines and over here a, a great hall, they don't got feudalism so they have already a plus 50 uh, percent penalty to their technology cost, which is bad, really bad. Um, yeah, but you can it, it can grow in various means and ways. Uh, back to this. So you also want, you always want an institution to pop or at least try and get it as fast as possible. You can't force it to pop in a province by spending a lot of monarch powers but we won't really be delving into that right now. Okay. <laughs> uh, back to technology. Technology gives you various things, uh, ideas, uh, units, buildings, new ships and so on. You can see here what the technology itself will give. We have three, uh, this is four. If we got technology four and admin or administrative technology, we will get the ability to build a church, uh, which gives more tax modifiers in a province. If we build a church in a province, that is. Over here you can see other things uh, that we will get down the line from tech. Uh, number of states here, this is mainly trade and ships. Now admin is basically buildings and money and how to handle provinces. Diplomatic technology is uh, basically trade, colonization and ships and military is, well, military uh, units basically and military buildings. Over here you can see there's a little icon buildings, you can see when you get the different buildings and down here as well and down here. And the reason when you start at Tech 3 you want to get to Tech 4 as early as possible because you can see here what we get Pike Square, you can read the text if you want to, and Pike Square gives us military tactics, which is good. I will tell you in the military episode why. And land morale of 0 0.5, so this is really good. This is not percentage, this is an, a, just a boost to your morale. If you have this and your opponent only has Tech 3 and you have Tech 4, usually your tr troops will massacre uh, or make them run extremely fast, the, other, uh, the ones you're fighting, uh, because of your bonus to morale. You can see here when you get new infantry types, cavalry types and cannons and what they give in shock and fire. Right, uh, I guess we'll move on here. This is also innovativeness up here. It means if you get tech early you get innovativeness which gives a small bonus to if you have a hundred as you can see at the bottom of this tooltip you have uh, army and navy tradition decay minus one which is uh, how to explain it that short. Um, it makes your men fight and ships fight better. 
<laughs> and all power costs down, down by minus 10. Usually you hover maybe around 20 to 30 percent of this innovativeness, unless you actively go for it as fast as possible, which is which I'm trying in uh, my current Swedish campaign. Ideas, that's the fun part of choosing a nation, because every country has an, their own ideas, or somewhat own, own ideas. All countries start with two traditions up here. French traditions gives us plus 20% national manpower modifier, which gives us more soldiers. And a diplomatic reputation, plus one, which makes us integrate people faster, and maybe also make people like us a bit more. If we got all of these ideas, we can get discipline to our troops, 5%, which is very good. Um, how to get these, you ask? You have these slots here for ideas. You can click here and you can choose an idea group. There are various, they're divided into admi admin ideas, diplomatic ideas, and military ideas. You can go and see them here. I'm not going to th go through all of them, but uh, they do various things for your country um, and help you in various ways. Usually, I tend to get, it depends a bit. But getting defensive over here to start with is really good because the second idea you take, you're going from left to right here with these ideas. The second one is more morale, which is really, really good. But not always I'll take defensive, but usually. Click that away. And when you get three ideas, when you take a group, say I took a f defensive ideas, I took the first three here, uh, then I will get my first own French idea, which is French language in all courts, which gives diplomatic relations plus one. Each of these ideas cost 400 monarch points of their respective, like, uh, like tree here. So this cost f one idea here cost 400 military monarch points, which is up here. We only have 94. We can't even take an idea group yet. You can see here unlocked and national idea five. So we need at this level five. You can see this uh, over here. A number of idea groups available. At level five, we get one idea group. So we have to wait. So that was ideas. Uh, missions. Each country has their own mission they can do. If they do various things, they can get a bonus to their country. It sort of railroads a bit where a country wants to go and what they want to do. Say, we have reconquer Normandy here. The Duchy of Normandy is a de jure subject of the Kingdom of France. It should be returned to our rule. So, you can see if you hover your mouse, mouse over this uh, question mark, you can see this lights up. It means when we own this bit here, we get this idea and um, the reward for taking Normandy is France gains a permanent claim on Brittany area. And you can see it runs down to here. And then we can attack Brittany without any, any penalties. So you generally want to do these ideas. They are very nice in general. Um, especially some countries have their own specific mission trees here, you can see. But some countries have like very generic ones. Uh, this is a gen generic one, for example, um, and this one over here as well, this line here. But France got their own, uh, well, well, a lot of their own ideas. So that's missions. Here is decisions. You can do various decisions for your country here if you uh, if you have these, what do you call them, modifiers uh, taken care of. If we're in the age of absolutism, etc., etc., we can do. Lestat Soestmar, which gives France a bonus to prestige and athleticism for the end of the game. So that's handy. And policies, if you have several idea groups uh, completed, idea groups was over here. If you have two, you get a bunch of policies you can do. Um, and here you can like install them to your country. You can see what type of policies each idea group gives by holding, let's see here, the mouse over the name. You can see if we took economic ideas and then took, I can't move the mouse and show you at the same time, but at the very top of this tooltip it says economic ideas, then a small text, then the first yellow text is called weapon quality standards. If I have quality ideas, I can give my troops plus 5% discipline for a policy cost. Each policy tends to cost one monarch power of their respective uh, uh, genre. Here it costs military, as you can see the little cross swords next to quality ideas. So if I have economic here, finished, and quality over here, I can give my troops plus 5% discipline. So that was here. Then we have stability and expansion. Um, and you can see here, and uh, war exhaustion, 
uh, is bad for the country. Right now we have zero. You get war exhaustion if your nation is under attack and your provinces are sieged. Uh, stability is how good your country is doing. Um, and uh, you generally want to have high stability. But the higher stability you got, the more expensive it becomes. You can gain stability through uh, random events. I tend to hover around zero stability or plus one. You don't really want to say that minus stability uh, in general. You can do it if you are a republic, then it's not that bad. But in general, you don't want to be at, at least zero stability. You can see how many states your country got, or how many you how many states you can statify, or territories you can statify. I will tell about that in the economic. Uh, uh, episode. You can see if your country is about to get a disaster. Generally, you don't want these disasters to happen, so you want them to remain grey here. There's various things you can do to make them happen if you want them to happen, but uh, yeah, tend to stay away from disasters. Overextension, it is tied into warfare. I will talk about that in the warfare episode. Expansion, this is mainly or only about uh, colonizing things. This is the colonizing range we have and how a bonus to uh, our colonies when we colonize something. And you can set a policy on how you want to deal with the natives where you colonize. And this is uh, rebel groups will pop out here before they, well, pop out in your nation. You can see them growing in strength here in the screen. Religion. We are Catholic, you can see here. We can change religion by this button up here, but right now we can't change to anything other than just being Catholic. Um, being Catholic gives us a bonus to our Catholic provinces, but uh, non-Catholics or non... no, Christians who are not Catholics, they don't like us. Muslims and stuff like that, they don't mind that much. Only a bit. <laughs> you can see how much people like you in if you uh, if you rule over them with their faith. Catholics, they really like us. They get a bonus 5% or 5, minus 5 unrest rather. If we have heretics, which is basically other Christian groups, Orthodox and later Protestant and Reformed, and Anglican Church from England, they don't really like us, we have a minus two. And heathens, that's Muslims, Hindus, Shinto, and so on, they don't like us either, if we rule them. You can convert if you have a strong enough missionary strength. Missionary strength is down here, plus two. Uh, so that's okay. Uh, some, some religions are easier to convert than others, though. We can defend of the faith. Uh, I tend to stay away from this in general. It gives you a bunch of bonuses, but it also gives or makes your technology 5% more expensive. And you're also called into, um, say, if I became defender of the faith, faith of the Catholics, then if, then if any non-Catholics attack a Catholic nation, I was asked to join that war. Uh, if I say no, I will lose the defender of the faith. Cardinals, this is for the Pope. I tend not to use the Pope that much, but the Pope can give you various bonuses if you remain Catholic. I will not go into that right now, though. Here is the Reformed Desire. Protestant will will fire at some point when this reaches around 100. This will go up over time, and then the Reformation will happen in Europe. And down here you can see if you had any in provinces who were not Catholic, you can see how difficult or how easy they were to convert down here. And if you had any vassals, you can click and see their provinces as well with this button. Military. Uh, I will go over this in detail in the military episode, but in basically it shows your units up here, ma uh, land units and your naval units, what they what they cost here, base cost and their maintenance cost every month for every infantry. We are paying 0 0.21 ducats per month. And you can see here they have some something called compatibility. Fire modifier, shock modifier, and how many we have. We have 22 infantry and 8 cavalry. We have uh, no cannons right now because they haven't been invented yet. And ships as well, uh, cannons and hulls, and hull size. Basically you want as much of this, this and this as possible. Combat, fire modifier, and shock modifier. Over here, <laughs> it uh, shows you various things regarding your army and navy. One of the more important ones, or two of the more important ones, are force limit. How big an uh, army your nation can support without paying a lot of extra money. If you go above this limit, right now we have 30 uh, regiments in total, 22 infantry and 8 cavalry, which gives 30. We can have up to 38, they still cost money. If we go above this limit, it will start to cost us a lot of money. The same with ships down here. 
The rest I will go over in this respective episodes. And you can see our two leaders right now. We have uh, Jean Didonois and Jean Beru. And they have various stats. Uh, the more of these pips, uh, the better. We have Fire Pip, Shock Pip, Maneuver Pip, Siege Pip. Fire Pip and Shock Pip, uh, they are the tools you want to have a lot in. Maneuver and Siege is also nice, but these two makes you win battles, which is, in my opinion, the more important part of the game. Shock especially at the start of the game, Fire later at the game. They're both really good, still, but in the start of the game, not a lot of stuff gives plus Fire. Uh, you can see here, more, more Shock for infantry and cavalry. Zero Fire for cavalry, a bit of Fire for infantry, so you want a lot of Shock at start. And over here you can mothball your forts. Right now we are paying 4 dockers per our fort. We can click this button and our forts goes to red. So we're not paying for them. Uh, but they will automatically go up when at war. But if England invaded and went to war immediately and attacked here, there will be no one in this fort and they could just go in and take the fort without any, any uh, waiting time. So you have to be a bit careful about that. You can here, see here, automatically raise maintenance during war. So. You want that to be on in general, I think. Uh, down here you can hire new leaders for points. You can also make your heir and king uh, leader, but if they die in combat, you will get a penalty or a minus two stability point. Uh, stability. stability is something you wanted over here, right? So if your king died, you will get a minus two. If he died in combat, that is. Uh, so you have to be a bit careful about making your king um, a general. We don't have any subjects, so I can click here. And this last one is Estates. Uh, this is being reworked in uh, in the coming DLC expansion right now, but I will go through it in the economic episode. I will be releasing a bit more than this. Alright. <laughs> okay, that was a bit more than I expected. So that was the basic rundown of this. There's a lot more to it than just that. Uh, the next episode I'll probably go into diplomacy slash how to do war, maybe. Uh, we'll see about it. Uh, but that was the basic of alerts. Up here, let me just go through these um, resources you have. This is money. This is your manpower. Each regiment costs a thousand uh, troops. So it doesn't matter if you uh, make uh, infantry, cavalry, or cannons, they all cost a thousand. And this is your sailors. Uh, ships cost different things in terms of sailors. Our stability is zero, as shown before. Our corruption is two, as shown before. We have eight prestige. Having high prestige gives, as you can see, the green um, numbers at the bottom, various bonuses. In general, you want to have a lot of prestige. It also gives morale to your army and navy, which is very handy. Uh, legitimacy is how people look at how, well, uh, your royal family, how le uh, legitimized they are. A hundred is max. Uh, zero is the lowest you want to have as high of, of this as possible in general because it gives a lot of bonuses as you can see to unrest tolerance of other tr um, faiths and so on and this is power projection uh, power projection is somewhat of a new modifier resource they introduced in general you want to have if you can get 50 of power projection you get power projection for from various things, but in general you gain it from taking provinces from your rivals. As you can remember the rivals over here in Diplomacy. If I clicked France, if I took stuff from Denmark, England or Burgundy, I would gain power projection. This power projection goes down by, in general, one per year, or is it month? I can't recall. Year, I think. Right? Uh, but yeah, I think it's year. Uh, does it tell you this here? I don't think so. But um, yeah, try to get to 50 because then you can see at the middle of the screen you get a plus one to each of your monarch powers. Over here you have your merchants, your colonists, your diplomats, and your missionary. And what age you're in. Age is something... <laughs> another system. It's very, <laughs> very, it takes a long time to explain. I will go through that in another episode. But age is what age you're in basically, and you can get various bonuses if you complete various aspects of the game, as you can see out here. I have completed Discover America for some reason, um, and then it, it gives you more Splendor points, which, which you can use on various abilities here. Uh, you can see the ages up here, there are four in total, Age of Discovery, Age of Reformation, Age of Absolutism, and Age of Revolutions. 
and then you have your monarch powers here they go up every month or down mostly up hopefully up you can see how many you're gaining and why you're gaining that number we're gaining seven because base value of three our dude our king has admin skill of four we have a minus one because of national focus on military but we have a advisor giving us plus one so uh, we have three plus four that's seven minus one that's six plus one that's seven so it makes sense right and there's also something called a macro build out over here which i will discuss in another episode because this episode is taking way way too long right now <laughs> uh, yeah i think that's it for now uh, that was just a rundown of the tabs where we are what all this is this over here you can also change the music here if you want to click here hey i want to listen to the end of an era click this and then click this icon again Boop. there's also called something called show timeline it will let you show the time that has passed you can see uh, what has happened right now we only clicked for a month so that will be over right now <laughs> there's nothing to show really uh, i think that's it yeah so there's also a map mode down here we'll also go through them later on uh, yeah, so thank you for watching this very basic introduction to EU4. I will delve into other aspects of the game in the next couple of episodes. Warfare, diplomacy, economic, and so on. So, thank you very much for watching. Please leave a like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell button. Very much appreciate your support, and I hope I will see you in the next one. Bye.